Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'ad. The question is asking here, do they give zakat on wealth that they've got, but they owe it to other people, meaning they've got debts? Do they need to give zakat on that money, even though it's not really their money? Now, debts is a very uh, sensitive area. Uh, there's two ways of looking at debts. That which is owed to you, do you need to give zakat on that? And that which you owe to other people, do you need to give zakat? And there's two separate, completely separate sets of rulings. And we'll talk about uh, the first set of rulings, inshallah, on another occasion. Uh, here, what we are asking here is, if I've got some money, I've got a thousand pounds, say, for example, but that thousand pounds doesn't actually belong to me. I owe it to this person and to that person and to that person. Do I still need to give zakat on it or not? Now, the ulama have said that if you've got three conditions which have been fulfilled, then you must give zakat. Zakat becomes wajib upon you. Number one, you've got the minimum nisab. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ فِي مَا دُونَ خَمْسَ أَوَاكِ مِنْ وَرَكَ السَّدَقَةِ Anything which is less than 595 grams of silver, there is no zakat on it. But once it meets that minimum threshold, you must give zakat on that wealth. That's condition number one. Condition number two, you've had it for one full hijri year. This is from the hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Laysa fi ma zakat, there is no zakat on wealth, hatta yahul alayhi al until you've had it for one full hijri year. Second condition. Third condition, you've got possession of that wealth. Now, this is important when we're talking about debts. You've got possession of that wealth. If one, if all the three of these actually, if all three of these have been met, then you must give zakat on that wealth that you've got. So now, for example, you've got a thousand pounds and you owe that thousand pounds to Abdullah. Abdullah says, I want it in July. You've already had it for one year. You need to give zakat on it because you are the person who owns it. You have got the minimum threshold and you've had it for one full hijri year. But possession, like I've said, and this is the view of the majority on it, there is no real khilaf on this issue. Because once you've got that wealth, it is yours. It belongs to you. Even though you've got debts, you still need to give zakat. But possession is very important because if you pay off your debt and it's not been one full hijri year, then there's no zakat on it. So say, for example, you've got a thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds, a million pounds in your pocket, but you've not had it for one full hijri year. You don't need to give zakat on it. Pay off your debts, hasten to pay off your debts, so you don't need to pay zakat on it. Not so that you're running away from paying zakat, but possession is a very important factor when it comes to zakat. If you don't possess it, if you don't actually own it, and you need to give it to other people, then there's no zakat on it. But if you've had it, for one full year, and you've met the misab, and you have it in your possession, then you must give zakat on it. Now, a person might think, well, okay, that's that's fine, I'll accept that. Uh, this is the religion of Allah, that's fine. But there must be some kind of hikmah involved in it, that if a person, is, even though he's in debt, they still need to give charity. What is ajib from our religion? And one of the factors of our religion which makes it a symbol of the haq which is that from the concepts of zakat and from the rulings of zakat and the maqasid of zakat you will find that it is very very likely that there is a person who gives zakat and they also receive zakat hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions from the categories of those people who can receive zakat well what mean those people who are in debt so what you've got in your hand, look how ajib this is and look at the process of cooperation and love and unity and, and, and uh, you know, being in need uh, and also helping those at the same time whilst being in need yourself and being considerate and thinking about other people and think about your own situation and think about other people's situation. Look at all these different emotions and these different acts of worship even that are taking place. You might be obligated to give zakat but at the same time somebody else in society might look at you and say you know what this person's going through a hard time and i know that they're in debt and i need to give zakat let me give my zakat to this person to help them out and you will find this in the books of fiqh that a person gives zakat and he receives zakat at the same time zakat al-fitr is a perfect example of that also 
Walillah, alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us Islam. Therefore, just to summarize this now, if a person uh, owes a debt, as long as they have had the money for a year that meets the minimum nisab and it's in their possession, they need to give zakah on it. Because that becomes now the right of the fuqara, the poor and the needy. It's not their wealth anymore. Um, but if they feel that they need to make these payments before uh, the, the year, the whole comes into play, then there is no possession. And one of three of those conditions have not been met, then there is no zakat. So what I'm trying to say here is that if they've got that wealth and they've met those three conditions, they need to give zakat on it. There's no two ways about it. However, um, when a person understands that these are the conditions which need to be in place in order for zakat to be wajib, they then can look at their situation and say, okay, well, I'm going to start paying off people before the year is up. Uh, I'm going to start taking out of this my possession and giving it to the person who it actually does belong to, etc. Not so that the person is running away from zakat, of course, this is not what we're condoning, but it's so that the person can give the people their due rights and they can manage their own finances, finances at the same time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he helps us to give us the cat of our hearts and our minds and our souls and our tongues and our statements and our actions and our wealth and our family and that we meet him in the best of zakat when we return back to him. Allahu <laughs> a'ala